Hi, everyone. Um, excited to be here. Um, this is um, actually my third time in Berlin uh, in the past year, my, but my first time in, in Berlin Buzzwords. Um, so thank you very much for the organizing to arranging this um, amazing conference. Um, so what we're going to talk today is about software-based search and the limitation it has uh, reaching the glass ceiling of what is uh, possible to achieve with software-based solutions. And we are going to talk about how uh, um, domain-specific computing can help uh, break those limitations and push the limitations around performance, scalability, and cost-effectiveness. So a little bit about myself. I've been in the world of AI, machine learning, data analytics for many years now. I'm dealing with some of the greatest challenges around um, performance at scale. Um, and in the last three and a half years, I started Hyperspace with a group of performance-obsessed engineers um, to exceed the limitations and or they exceed um, um, the limitations of real-time search. So a few words about hyperspace. Um, you know, there are many different kind of databases, many different kind of vector databases arising uh, lately. Um, so maybe to uh, focus on the two things that distinct us with all the rest. Uh, one, in terms of product, um, we really focus to build our product from the ground up as a cloud-native uh, hybrid search database, combining both lexical and vector search in one place. Um, the second element, uh, which is more relevant for, for this talk today, is uh, our unique um, technological approach. And uh, another question is, why is it needed specifically now? Um, and so most of you have been practicing search for many years now, um, keywords, classic ser cl classical search. But as you probably know, many things have been changed in the past year or two, uh, while generative AI, LLMs, um, RAG has become so popular uh, in many applications. Um, so in fact, every um, LLM system is actually a search system. And as you probably know, search is hard. And uh, search is even becoming harder every day uh, that goes by. So why is that? So first of all, um, classic search been around for years uh, with, open, with Elasticsearch, Solar, OpenSearch, and others. And now vector search comes into play uh, with a huge hype around it, dealing with unstructured data. Um, in my perspective, Vector search is not coming to replace um, um, classic search. It's actually coming to complement it. But if considering um, the idea of having uh, a unified search solution that combines both together, both kind of indexes, one over structured data and one over unstructured data, this becomes be become search and, and information retrieval even, even harder than it used to be. Another element that uh, uh, is constantly happening or growing is that data keep growing exponentially. So either structured data or unstructured data, um, we see data sets just keep growing. Um, and you know, if a if, if few years ago, um, having billions of documents was unique, right now it's actually becoming a standard. Um, so Trying to do it a, a bit interactive, um, let's, let's do a quick survey. Um, out of the people here in the audience, how many people of you are running search over um, millions, of, millions of documents or more, if you can raise your hand? Around 80%. Uh, how many are running over hundreds of millions or more, if you can raise your hand? Like 40%. How many are running over billion scale or more? OK. OK, 10 hands, around 10 hands uh, raised. Um, so those of you which are running on, on billion scale and beyond, um, I can just assume that this is familiar to you. Um, and the triangle of search compromises, 
where companies uh, constantly need to balance between performance, accuracy, and cost. And uh, um, in some cases, needs to sacrifice all the three together. So what can be done? What can be done in order to run at billion scale in real time and with a peace of mind in every query uh, without uh, constantly uh, minding uh, the cluster, the health, the excess capacity, the surges in demand, and stuff like that. So the best approach for that uh, that I want to share today is domain-specific computing. So um, unlike um, um, traditional software-based solutions, they are built on a general purpose CPU. And uh, as, as the name suggests, general purpose, that those CPUs are designed to be versatile, to be able to treat any kind of, of workload. But in the other way, uh, way around, they are not specific to any uh, uh, given workload, and they are not optimized for any given workload. The concept of domain-specific computing is to cre create an architecture, a compute architecture, which is tailor-made for a specific workload. In our case, search. So what we've, what, what we've done in hyperspace is that we've reconstructed the entire workload end-to-end. -end. So we reconstructed the entire data path, the indexing, the queuing mechanism, and we, make the, we made it tailor-made and optimized for the most common search functions, such as filtering, inverted index, um, aggregations, TF-IDF, and vector search. So by designing a dedicated chip for search, it is now possible to run hybrid search, both vector and lexical, uh, gaining 10%, around 10%, uh, no, sorry, about 10x in performance at huge amounts of scale. And there is also an efficiency factor built into that because those um, um, search uh, processing units are highly efficient and can, can also cut costs by half, infrastructure costs. Now, the fact that those programmable um, instances have become available in the cloud, uh, on AWS, on Azure, on other cloud providers, uh, for those of you that are familiar with FPGAs, makes it really easy uh, um, for companies like us to uh, program them remotely and actually build a cloud-native managed database. So in fact, the database is fully compatible to software-based solutions that exist, like Elasticsearch, like Lucene. But under the hood, there is a, a dedicated chip for search that is tailor-made for, for, for search and information retrieval. And our users doesn't need to um, um, uh, manage that. It's all being managed behind the scenes as a managed service. So we spoke a, a lot about the why. Now let's talk about the how. How to implement domain-specific computing. What's happening behind the hood that make it, makes it so fast, so scalable, and so efficient? So let's look on a chip architecture, for instance. So imagine a general purpose CPU. It has a very specific number of cores, few cores in many cases. So in this architecture, we actually see tens of cores, tens of search cores. Search is the only thing that they know to do, uh, but they are highly optimized for search. So those cores are, are highly parallelized. And uh, on the right side, we can see dedicated processors. So a processor for uh, filtering, for inverted index, processors dedicated for TF-IDF and ranking, processor dedicated for vector search. So in this way, uh, um, um, the entire search compute is highly optimized and much more efficient than general purpose CPU. Now let's consider uh, the entire workflow. I have a, a document I want to search and find the most similar items. And let's assume I have billions of, 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 of searchable documents. The idea of breaking, breaking the flow into two phases, where starting with candidate generation, followed by the ranking phase, 
creates a lot of opportunities. So the ranking phase can, can um, uh, implement metadata filtering, some specific business uh, logic that may narrow down the searchable space from, let's say, billions to either thousands or millions. So in this way, the ranking phase can only run on, on those subset of results in a very efficient way. Only reviewing those most relevant documents that, that can actually relevant per the business, business uh, uh, logic or, or filters that, that have been applied. So let's assume I started with billions of, 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 can, of objects. Then I created my candidate list. Let's say I have millions of there. Now I'm, I'm kind of streaming those millions uh, through the, uh, uh, um, on the right side, through the score function control, and then streaming them uh, down in a, a highly multi-threaded space. So unlike uh, um, general purpose CPU, which is a single threaded, what we did is we, we built a, a, a multi-threaded four lines uh, uh, of ranking processors that each and every one is, is aimed to um, calculate the score of the document. So applying um, um, scoring based on either TF-IDF or, or any business logic that, that exists. So b basically, uh, those are specific instruction sets written by us, which are written in the hardware level, which is uh, uh, fully optimized for the given function. Okay. So I spoke a little bit about compute optimizations, but not all systems are compute bounded. Now let's talk about memory optimization, because many uh, systems are actually limited by the memory efficiency, uh, the memory speed, or memory footprint. So in this case, you can think about an architecture that is highly optimized for memory in terms and, and delivering fast memory access. So think about a SPU as a, as a search processing unit that has full control on all levels of, of the memory. Unlike software-based solutions that kind of constrained by the different le levels of cache, think about um, the flexibility to rebuild everything from scratch, OK? And controlling all different levels of, of, of memory. So on the left side, we can see the SPU memory. This is the memory that fully attached to the hardware itself. It's, this is the super hot memory. Then on the middle, we, we see the host memory. It's still in memory, still fast, but a little bit less. And then we see NVMe and EBS as the disk storage. The fact that you have full control of, of all different levels of, of memory allows us to automatically examine the data, examine the different fields, examine the cardinality of the fields, and optimizing where uh, it makes sense to, to index each and every field. So in this way, we can actually balance between performance and cost. So we have the ability to come up with highly performant um, kind of clusters that can deliver, uh, take the performance to the extreme, maybe with the same, same cost. But in the other way around, we, we have the ability to provide a similar performance but cut the cost significantly by offloading lots of memory into the disk. Um, it's not just about uh, memory speed. It's also about memory footprint. So uh, by reconstructing um, the, the index with advanced uh, data structures, it is um, possible to make the index much more compact. Uh, so you can see example of different um, um, uh, index types and how efficient they become in terms of memory footprint, making the index much smaller and eventually requires uh, much less hardware to handle that. Um, and some of the values is about predictability. You know, uh, predictability uh, is a super important uh, aspect, especially in low latency, high throughput kind of systems, where in some cases you get surges in demand. In some cases, you suffer from software kind of issues of garbage collections where uh, um, latency is not stable. In domain-specific computing, we get very, very predictable performance because of 
the, the, we don't have the anomalies of garbage collections that exist in software, but also because there are lots of excess capacity to deal with surges in demand. And then Black Friday and stuff like that are much less uh, of an issue. Um, last slide, um, sharing some real uh, life example. This is taken, you know, uh, one thing that I hate the most is generic performance benchmarks because it's, it's not so reliable. Um, so over here, what you can see here is, is a live um, example taken from a customer. Um, so you can see here is an apples to apples comparison on a workload running on, um, uh, on a one billion documents of real data of customer on the right side, running on different levels of QPS, anywhere between 50 to 200. So uh, the customer uh, limitation is 100 milliseconds in this case, where we can see that this is exceeding dramatically in uh, 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 high levels of QPS. On the left side, same data set, same queries, uh, running on a hyperspace uh, SPU, very consistent, way below the 20 milliseconds. Um, this is quite promising for that specific customer, which is really uh, sensitive to latency. So in conclusion, uh, we spoke about software inefficiencies. Um, we spoke about um, the kind of limitations um, that, that uh, uh, reaching today uh, with a combination of the vector search and lexical search together, with the data keep growing. Uh, so there is definitely a need uh, in a paradigm shift between uh, the existing infrastructure into the uh, infrastructure that can um, 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 uh, allow uh, the domain-specific compute power that future applications demand. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, we, are, we are here at Hyperspace for your questions, and also you are most welcome to uh, visit us in our booth. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience? Actually, I have a, I have a quick question. So it, uh, this is at least what I'm gathering from this. It's being pitched as specialized hardware. But it's not specialized hardware that a consumer, for instance, would be able to purchase. It's specialized hardware that you guys are using behind a SaaS. So, so this is a very good question. So um, going down into the business model, the business model is to provide a cloud-native managed database. So the idea is, is to provide uh, a managed service which is com fully compatible to Elasticsearch, same syntax, same APIs, allowing an easy drop and replace. So our users doesn't need to be um, knowledgeable about chip design. Obviously, we do everything behind the scenes. Um, but provide exactly the same interfaces available in the cloud on AWS or other cloud providers. Is there, um, is there a plan to eventually provide this specialized hardware to the consumer market? Or is, this, is the business model pretty much going to stay like a, like a SaaS specialized? The business model is to stay as a SaaS. We don't want our users to be um, um, to work hard. We want to take also. most of the heavy lifting on us, making it as, as easy, as seamless as possible to, to implement. Uh, maybe in the future, for some companies that are on-prem and running some extensive load, and there is no other choice to, to run on, on cloud. But even in this case, we prefer to take as much ownership as possible on the entire flow. Sounds good. Full service. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Full service, yes. Um, so out of curiosity, um, how sustainable is the chip? Like, let's say there's a new generation of yeah, conventional CPUs, would it be overpassed by the performance by these CPUs, or how would it adapt? So um, I think the most interesting part, maybe I skip that, we used standard instances provided in the cloud. We, used, uh, we are using uh, cloud-based instances of FPGA provided by AWS as a service. So AWS is responsible on the hardware, we get it with 99.999% availability like any other server. But we put those kind of chips, our chips, with no brain. Once we deploy our architecture that can be deployed every day, like, like software, 
So we, can, we have the power of hardware with the flexibility of software, and we have the ability to adjust this chip design software on a daily basis. So this really helps us to be on the edge all the time, be very close to our customers. Um, if there is any missing feature, if there is any bug, we can immediately fix that. Unlike, you know, CPUs and GPUs that take forever to develop. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We round out of time, but I'm here for any questions that you may have. And come visit us in the booth. Thank you.